So how to describe the final round of the European Le Mans series held here at Portimao, the Algarve International Circuit, kicking off half an hour later than it should have done because of a nasty shunt this morning in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. This was a bad one in our race, though, for the ELMS, when Matthias Kaiser went for a gap that wasn't there on the inside of Tony Wells, put them both out of the race. Time and von der Helm brilliantly judged overtake this on by Manuel Correa, threading the eye of the needle between the prototype to his left and the bright yellow iron links Ferrari to his right, but he did get the place sealed down at Primera corner. Here, the 43 car that had been started so well by Pietro Fittipaldi, seventh on the grid, but it wasn't that long before he was leading the race. A nasty uh, crash for Alex Pironi coming out of the final corner, pranging the barriers at high speed backwards. Hopefully he was OK after that, the car certainly not, and had to be retired. It's a half sideways moment for Sander Hahn. What about the reaction from Alex Capardia to drive around it, though, and to know which side of the track the Aston was next going to go? Delightful battle between Panis Racing and the 37 of Cool Racing, eventually going the way of the French squad. On the inside, here's Dorian Pau. Watch the door mirror get folded back, and then it pings back into shape as she muscled her way by the 69 Oman Racing Aston Martin. Rattling the curb there at the time, the class leader in LMP3. This was the moment where crucial damage, we think, was uh, affecting the 13 car. It didn't manifest itself straight away. That was Nico Pino um, catching the side of Matthias Besch and possibly doing some stress fracturing to the steering or suspension, which would bite later on. Starting to the inside there, the 17 car of Malta Jakobsen, who drove brilliantly in the closing stages. Cool Racing thought probably they wouldn't get a championship. It was highly unlikely at this stage. That's the reason why they're trying to put a brave face on it in the garage. And now rejoining, after what he thought was a puncture, is Guilherme Oliveira, but he can't steer the car, we reckon. Didn't get through turn one, and as he rejoins, he catches John Hartshorn in the Oman Racing Aston Martin, the red version. That was a big off for John. Oh, and it doesn't sound too good from inside Guilherme Oliveira's car either. Oliveira dropping to the ground in the gravel trap when he realises that any chance of inter Europol competition taking this year's drivers and team's title have gone, and that's how quickly things can change. John Hartshorn left in the barrier, unfortunately, and I'm sure he was taken to the medical centre to make sure all was well there. But we had so many different uh, on-the-day winners, championship winners. It was Prima Racing winning the race, winning the, the race on track and, indeed, the championship. What a moment this is in the history of the ELMS, though, with the Iron Dames victorious for the first time, Dorian Parr, Sarah Bovey and Michelle Gatting. That is their overall classification, 126 uh, laps completed. Prima Racing take the win, 49 seconds to the good from Panis Racing, uh, and just ahead of Cool Racing to complete that podium. A uh, little further down before you get to the LMP2 Pro-Am winner, Racing Team Turkey, uh, they will finish the race sixth. 17, Cool Racing took the fight to the rest, did all they could to go to the front, and waited for the, what the gods of racing would throw it into Europol. It's going to be a fourth time second in this championship for the racing bakers. Bitter, okay. bitter luck. Iron Lynx, the Iron Dames, the 83 car, takes the win in GTE. It'll be the 77 Proton Competition squad 